Hi, I'm Gary Oben. Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Codeless. And today, um, before we start, I'm going to just show you that I'm not holding a coffee cup, but instead it's a, a champagne glass, which, you know, we're going to rename this champagne and codeless. And Thierry, who's our chief product, you have your glass of champagne there? I it's, do. Uh, I'm, I'm actually cheating, but Thierry, it is La Croix. So um, this way I have meetings after, but I did bring a bottle, which we're going to have to explain to everyone of why we call it champagne, because, which says uncork, and it's a, it's a pretty good bottle I think we have here. But um, so, so Thierry, who we've had on before with each of the product releases prior that he and his team have helped drive and deliver with engineering and product. Um, it's an amazing release that we just announced and um, something which I don't believe any other company has achieved, which is incredible. And it's going to involve the word Turing test and other things like that as we go through this. But um, first, Thierry, explain why we have champagne versus coffee here, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't like dog food at all. And so I've never been a fan of eating your own dog food kind of expression. So I kind of upgraded that to drinking our own champagne. And, and the reason for that is the release that we just launched is actually an entire new development environment that we have created without a single line of code entirely built on Uncork. So we've literally drank our own champagne uh, and hence the, 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 the title change today. And maybe also because I'm French, uh, may, maybe that has something to do with it as well. So, you know, it's funny. I always use the expression, you know, on dog food, right? We use it for, and I had to look it up after you made the comment the first time to say, well, you don't really like dog food. And apparently I might be wrong. Someone will correct me in the comments, but apparently the story was uh, one of the dog food companies, maybe Alpine or something like that, or Nestle, the CEO was in an advertisement said, our food so good that I feed it to my own dogs. And that's kind of where, so he didn't actually eat it either. Is the so somehow that expression got got changed? But um, I've been using drink our own champagne since you've taught me that expression. I do like that much better. So so here we are, and um, and just let's let's go through what that exactly means. So um, you know we always say what codeless is and the definition of codeless and really you know it's code that we've created and everyone always says of course it's code. So. The best explanation a client had given me to the category definition was very simple. It's you've got engineers on Cork. We assume that you have the best engineers. And of course we do. Those engineers are coding a library once, a function once, a procedure mm -hmm. once. And we're just reusing that code. And the difference being, we know we're starting on code that every other customer has already signed off from security and performance and reliability and usability and everything that they need to function. So we know it's already been signed off. So it's a common code base with one difference is that all customers are also on the same version of that code guaranteed. So you're benefiting each other. And I think that that definition of codeless, um, here we are, we at Uncork have coded Uncork. And, and Terry, how many how many lines of code have we coded for just the design tool over the years, just the experience tool? Oh, over the years, it's definitely way north of half a million that we had to create over the years and that we've basically just replaced with an Uncork application. Yeah, um, so that's, in, imagine, so um, we, we basically went through a journey, which was if our customers are using Uncork to create complex systems, and we always get asked that question, constantly get asked, how complex of a software could you create in Uncork? There is no software more complex than Uncork itself. You can imagine that. Just anyone thinking through any tool you've ever used in your life, think about the tool that you maintain that in, the design tool. The, for those developers watching the IDE, or Integrated Developer Environments, now think about recreating that tool in itself without a single line of code and proving could it be complex. So, so go ahead, Terry. Tell us a little bit more about Uncork Designer. Yeah. yeah, so it, it pretty much started from the realization that we, we have to change how we think about applications in general. If you look at where we are today, like every single company out there is struggling with different messages that are pushed at them. On one side is the classic developer centric model where a business person will have to write a PRD and then somebody will write specs and then eventually a developer will create the app. And then after a very long loop, loop feedback process, the user will be able to see whether or not what was built matches what they what they asked for. And in general, the answer is usually no. So that model is bottlenecked. It's too heavy. It's just not democratized enough. 
Now, there's a lot of hype around the pure citizen developer movement, where suddenly everybody becomes their own self-sufficient developers. I personally, and I know you don't either, I don't believe in that pure citizen developer model, not because I don't want to democratize innovation, but because down the line, you're going to need the experts to take that innovation and put it in production. So you will go back to the bottleneck of IT eventually, and you will be back to square one. So our, our whole approach was to uh, challenge this uh, dilemma and really go with bringing the two together, creating one platform that has a contextualized user experience that adapts itself, whether you're a very technical person, whether you're a business person, whether you're a designer, and bring all those people together virtually to collaborate. Think a big uh, a mix of a web conference with a, a doc collaboration meeting an ID, all that in one single application. You know, so what's fascinating is first off, just from an internal point of view, we were coding the previous designer using the the mean stack, right? The Angular stack was what we were using. Angular's end of life. So we would have to migrate that designer to React or whatever's coming next. And by the way, React's gonna go end of life. That's the one thing we do know for sure. Yep. Right? React will go end of life and we're gonna have to migrate it again. What we basically achieved is we've rebuilt the entire Uncork tool set, everything inside of Uncork. So we just future-proofed Uncork. So now next year, if React goes end of life, there won't be any end of life for Uncork. There's no work to do. It automatically will migrate to whatever comes next, whether it's Flutter or Review, whatever might come after React. But like even that alone, the future proof of our designer shows us what's possible. And then most importantly, it's uh, drinking your own champagne means let's prove out the capabilities. And by the way, let's let's be the first to use them. What Terry, like inside of New Designer, what were some of the features that we we were the first to use before they went out to customers? Oh gosh, there's there's, there's quite a few of them actually around like the, the collaboration aspect. We completely rethought the, the collaboration components that are now being made available for other customers to to consume. But those were redesigned completely from scratch uh, to be leveraged in in the U Designer. And and there's a few other examples. Now, one thing that is really exciting, Gary, on top of everything you said, the fact that designer will self-maintain over time, it's also an Uncork application, which means that it's easily customizable, it's easily personalizable, it's extensible. So think about it not only as a, an end of the journey IDE, but almost an IDE that can evolve over time based on what customers are looking for, based on what customers want to transform the look or the behavior of it. So it's both an IDE and also a platform itself, which is really, really exciting. That's that's amazing. And I know we also were using some B, BYOC, so bring your own component, yeah. which is, you know, and, um, you know, React Engine, which is really exciting, lightweight. So there's so many cool things that, that are part of this. And just um, when you think about a designer, you just want to hit on Terry what you're saying. So yeah. typically designers are fixed. Like if you think about any designer you use to create software today, it's pretty fixed and maybe you could install plugins. Like maybe you could actually, now in today's current designer before the new one, like it was fixed, it had one persona, like, and it was somewhere in between a business and technologist, it kind of handled both. Um, there was an RBAC applied for role-based access controls that said who could see what and do what, but now that you've created the new designer in Uncork and it's nothing but an application in Uncork. So that's suddenly you could use all of the features of Uncork to say, well, when this one business user goes in, they should never see this one option. Let's take out these components. Let's take out these features. Let's give the business user a generative AI interface to talk to it as opposed to, and when the developer goes in, they see a different interface completely. And then when the architect goes in, they're able to look at the scans and logs and when maybe administration goes in and they could see the actual config and testing and approvals and change board. And suddenly, um, like what I'm excited by is I have this vision that the designer becomes democratized itself. So every one of our clients will be creating their own and optimizing their own design experience to fit their developer needs instead of having to deal with what we tell them possible like that to me is um, every partner every strategic integrator imagine they go to a client with i've got my design tool and it's my secret sauce it's what's built into it here's everything you need to go that's just it's it's changing the model completely 
Yeah, it's it's basically moving from if you think about what we've done for all those years in 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 application development is we force people to f to fit into the mold that the system has defined, right? You you have to learn a certain way, you have to learn a certain user experience, a certain semantic, and you're you're basically forced to to follow whatever the vendor has decided for you. With with you designer, we're completely flipping that mold. Like you can actually create your own version of what's right to drive your innovation in your company. So there's really not one size fit all. It's literally adaptable to every company. Uh, companies will be more technical centric than business centric. Other will be the other way around. So you can really tailor that experience because at the end of the day, it's not about the tool, right? It's about the innovation that you create with the tool. And so that level of flexibility just opens new horizons in terms of how far you can drive innovation. And, uh, and Thierry, just to demonstrate the product, uh, the time to market benefits of Unquark over traditional development, it took us six years to build up the half a million lines of code base. And you could basically say an average engineer, 10,000 codes, lines of code a year, you could go through the math, 50 engineers or so. So um, like, we, when did we start the initiative? It deployed a few weeks ago. How long did it take from time from beginning to end? What would you say was the time frame to completely migrate? I'm going to use the word migrate, migrate the existing features and code base over to a codeless designer. It was super fast. I mean, the the the, the implementation of it using Encore was basically roughly a quarter, uh, which if you think about it, like, I mean, I mean, you and I have been in, in the software business for a long time. There's nothing that is done in, in a quarter in, in, in enterprise software, and especially not delivering a brand new IDE. So if you add the design phase or research phase, maybe two quarters, but we're talking about something from, from A to Z extremely, extremely fast, and also something that now will be extended by our teams. We're already working on the next release and then the next release in an extremely uh, light speed fashion. So again, it's, it's a brand new way to think about how we create the, the platform for our customers, and our customers can unleash their their innovation with the platform itself. Yeah, and it's become in a, a client discussion whenever we're asked about you know the incumbents that are already at that client. And we know we're working with large enterprises that have licensed most software already that are in existence. So there's always incumbents that are there. And when, my favorite thing when we're asked about these days, so what do you think about X Y Z? You know, whether it's a CRM tool or ITSM tool, and you know, what do you think about like how do you compare and my response lately is very simple, is go back and ask their tool, could they recreate their tool itself in itself? Like go back and actually pass the Turing test because if they're not using their own platform to create their platform, then why should you? Why do you believe in it? Much less do it in a quarter, by the way. But but Thierry, I know everyone's watching this, waiting, and th they want to see something. So could we, sure. let's jump in, let's, let's show everyone what the new designer looks like. And keep in mind what you're seeing here as Thierry walks through this is on Quark. This is just an on Quark application, the same applications most of you are using today without even knowing it's us. So let, let's go through. Perfect. Let, let's do a quick, a quick overview. So, so really, again, the idea was cross-functional development, bringing users together, uh, user-assisted experience where the system helps you do things better and faster, and of course, all the enterprise grade and SDLC and capabilities that one would expect out of an IDE. Uh, so again, there is not a single line of code in what you see here, completely built on Uncork. But the idea is fundamentally to have uh, users logging in the system and coming into what I call their innovation hub. This page here is not just about listing the applications that you're working on or that your company has built, but it's literally your central point of innovation. As a person, you have all your information there that other users in the company will be able to see. You also have contextualized information surfaced to you by the system based on what you've already completed in terms of training, for example, or the type of applications that you're trying to build. So what you see here as the top, at the top is system recommended guidance to help you do a better job. Um, you can also, from there, look at the collaboration. If you have received any comments or any tasks or any feedback from other users on things that you have created. Again, the idea is everybody is synchronously in the platform. Uh, and then, of course, from there, you can filter the apps that you want to see. You can store them, install them, and then you can dive into one. And so when you dive into one here, the concepts, it's all about contextual rendition. Whatever you need on the screen at a specific point in time is displayed to you. So gone are the days where you, we put everything on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the screen and hope for the best. It's really around based on what you're doing right now, based on who you are, this is what you need to see. 
So you can, of course, you can do all the usual things that people would expect, drag and drop, uh, editing the property of a specific field, etc. And the beauty is as you're doing that, you're seeing the result of it in real time. So this is not like, you know, you, you code and then you compile and then you go back and then you compile um, or, or even in low code, no code solutions where you have to mix a bit of visual with some code. Here it's ex completely 100 percent codeless based and, and, and I, highly visual. Uh, you can also tag people in there. You can give them tasks. You can you can give comments and then you can review literally in real time what the app that in this case we've just created, how the, the app looks like. So imagine if you're, if you're the business user and you can have access right away to that prototype as it's being built. I mean, th this is a game changer. Before it would have been emails and miscommunications and broken telephones and hundreds of meetings where right now I can literally post it, my feedback directly onto the app. Uh, so it's, it's, it's moving from this kind of smoke signal asynchronous approach that we've had for the last 40 years to literally in sync design and innovation cross-functionally. Yeah, I mean, and just going back to what that opens up, like, so we, you and I both hate the word citizen developers overused the way, I mean, just so everyone knows, like to me, citizen developers, when the business keeps being told no by technology, because they don't have the budget, they don't have the time, it'll take too long. So, but the business needs to do it. It's not in like option in many cases. So they need to, you know, and so they, they, they build 1 million line Lotus Notes app, as I've seen in my past, or Excel spreadsheets with 300,000 macros, which was kind of crazy. And like, they're all trying to use what they have to get what they need without technology. In this case, the business could build it. The business could use the new designer. They could go in. They won't be entitled to see the certificate management and services management for web services and RESTful APIs. And they won't be able to see the role-based access controls and any of the administration features, they might not be able to approve any promotion. They simply could request a deployment. And what it means is IT governs. IT does what it does best, which is let's control the risk. Let's make sure nothing goes from staging to UAT until IT approved it. Um, what I'm really excited about, Terry, is the concept of guardrails. I mean, being able to put into Uncork guardrails so that we're able to dynamically see and rate and score someone's configuration capability. And how could you do it better? And this, um, the new designer, since it's just an Encore app, every you know partner, every customer could really start to define their own guardrails inside of there and say, here's what is good structure for me. Here's a cyclomatic complexity score. And here's what, so it's just, it's amazing. Uh, really proud of what the team accomplished in, in just a quarter. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. And again, I, the biggest thing I'm going to ask everyone to do is if you are using any other developer platform, just ask them, have they used their own technology to create the design tool? And just ask that one question and see the answer. And I'm pretty sure you'll see we're the only ones. Maybe, I guess I could say Eclipse. Um, Eclipse is a, for those who don't know, Eclipse is a Java-based IDE for doing Java. So, mm -hmm. but Java itself, I mean, we're on par with it. That's that's a good place to be and replace it. So we can move it forward. That's awesome. So Thierry, this is exciting. Let me, any, what else would you say from a chief product officer point of view? Any advice, anything coming in the future? Give us less. Last bullet point. There's a lot of things we're cooking right now. There's many more champagne or coffee, but uh, we're also tackling a lot of things around AI and Gen AI in general. We want to help customers migrate all that legacy that is literally drowning their business into this never ending keep the lights on challenge. We want to help them modernize that and bring that into Encore, kind of the last migration you will ever do. Uh, so so there, there's a lot of really, really ambitious projects that the team is tackling. And then on the U-Designer front is literally we are shipping new capabilities on a biweekly basis. So we're already working on some of the AI capabilities, additional AI capabilities. Uh, we're working on, on, on many things that will continue to deepen that cross-functional uh, aspect. So many, many more things to come, but this is really... The U-Designer for me is a before and after moment. This is really... I mean, I've been using IDEs since like the, the, the late 80s uh, and, and I've never seen anything like that. I mean, just like, I, as you saw when Terry demonstrated this, like a drag and drop operation. So being able to drag a field and drop a field. Keep in mind that just on core components that you could use yourself. So it meant Terry's team and engineering had to basically enable drag and drop inside yeah. of Encore natively. Like how do we actually do, and it means thinking about 
what does it mean to start drag and drag drag over yeah. and how do you then expose those features which are traditionally coded only coded that's the only way you could do it before how do you expose that as lego blocks that you could drag and drop in and basically use so so to me like when i see the drag and drop that that's a i like this linkedin user gets posted game changer i agree completely in that comment there so drag and drop game changer it means that um customers themselves could start to enable drag and drop in their applications as we go through this and we already have one that's that's going to be an early adopter of that and we're excited by it so thank you terry for joining us here and thanks to the, the entire r d team of uncork of course that worked tirelessly to get this done it's it's an amazing job it's something which i'm very you could see how passionate I am about it. And in each demo I do when I'm talking to clients, it's what I bring up to show how complex an app you could build. You could build anything, basically. If you could build this, anything else is easier. So uh, thank you. Thanks, Terry, for joining us. And um, next time we'll be back. I think we'll be back to um, coffee. But, um, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe we'll have to come up with another theme. But, like, I'm going to, you know, we'll go back to the coffee and codeless. And, um, again, thank you for joining Champagne and Codeless. So see you everyone next time. Right. Thanks, Terry. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.